All right, hello there. This is going to be Cornell. So Cornell actually uh, is one of those schools where depending on the major you input on your Common App, uh, it changes the prompt type that you'll receive because it's department specific. I'm not going to be able to go through all the departments, guys. I, I think I'll just do the letters in science. But I think all of the, um, regardless of which which major and department you choose, you have to write this first 300 or uh, as a 350 word limit one. So let's start here. In the aftermath of the U.S. Civil War, Ezra Cornell wrote, I would found an institution where any person can find instruction in any study. For over 150 years, Cornell University has remained deeply committed to Ezra's vision. Explain how your life experiences will help inform your contributions to a learning community devoted to any person, any study. We encourage you, we encourage you to think broadly about your life experiences, including how local, global, or global communities you've been a part of helped shaped, have helped shaped your perspective. 350 words. Okay, so I think the key words that you want to, 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 to focus on is right here. It's any person any study, how your contributions, your life experience will allow you to encourage a learning community, contribute to a learning community where it could be anyone and any interest. A lot of students don't focus on this part. Uh, I'm going to give you an example that kind of expresses this, okay? So let's say I was part of Boy Scouts and I grew up in Boy Scouts initially thinking that we'd all meet like the typical catch, clean, cook, outdoorsman type of uh, type of type of individuals, um, but when I went to Boy Scouts, I found myself surrounded by none of those types of people. I had the super sciencey nerd guy who loved creating, you know, Millennium Falcons and doing engineering robotics and creating Gundam machines. I had another person who was kind of in that same zone of of nature outdoorsman, but just really into baseball and. Um, so very sports oriented rather than outdoorsmanship sports oriented. Uh, I had another student that was, or another like a squad, uh, member that was, for example, really into, into music. Um, so he would bring around like his saxophone. He also had like a little piccolo that he would love to play. He had those kinds of things that he'd always carry around. And so when you are thinking about your Boy Scout troop, you realize like, hey, wait a second, where's all my gung-ho, let's build a fire, let's live in the wilderness for one one month with just one set of matches, not even matches if you're hardcore enough, you know, just like a hatchet. It wasn't there. And initially you would think then that your squad, if you ever had to compete with other squads, would be put at a disadvantage. But it turns out that like the science guy, when we go on camping, knew how to navigate by just looking at the stars because he memorized a star map. And then the music guy would be the person who would entertain us during the campfires because he could play all these songs. He'd play like, you know, minor seventh interest, like uh, Harry Potter, din, 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 on his on his like piccolo and stuff. And that was really cool. The experience there at night when you're looking at the stars, knowing where the Big Dipper is from the, the science guy and then listening to music by the music guy. Like it helped me to understand that the contributions of people's different interests is what makes our world that much more colorful. It's what gives us a greater sense of appreciation, a gratitude. It makes us also realize that not every line of study is is singular to the point where it's 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 the most important thing. It, it depends on the time and the place and the emotion and the people you're surrounded by and the purposes that you have. So, I hope that example helped to express, at least from my point of view, why I'm also in line with Ezra Cornell's belief and as a result cornell's vision that they're following through his belief that uh we really do want to create a society where everyone has a chance to share their interest and pursue uh their goals um to that effect i wish students were able to talk about their life experiences of when they discovered that for themselves and as a result became a staunch supporter and advocate uh, for 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 this type of philosophy about, about of this type of, of community that we want to help foster, um, so that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for your version of my Boy Scout experience and how you came to terms with that. Uh, the global communities can also work too. Like for example, 
Another thing I can offer is my Mac rumors or when I'm on the internet and I'm doing DIY guides. You know, I create a DIY guide for your early MacBook Rev B. Uh, uh, the thermal paste back then was was horrendous. It wasn't being applied properly. They were like goop it on and it'd create like thermal issues. And so I would uh, create a guide, I'd take pictures and I'd post it. And then the following day I'd get a DM, I'd get a message and say, Hey, uh, do you mind if I translate this into Chinese for you? And I'll give you the, uh, you know, just, I'll give you the credit for it. I just want to post it on this. And then another person comes in and says, I want to do it in Spanish for you, right? Because he was in South America. Um, and that's when I started to realize from my kind of small little global niche community, kind of why it's important to, to, to have that connection with people from all around the world with different interests. Because at a certain point, your interests converge and that convergence point creates bridges to, to completely different worlds. And so that could have been another example as well. Uh, I hope I'm making this key point. For me, I, I'm looking for that student who understands from an IQ and mainly EQ level that any person, any study in this essay. I'm sorry, guys, if you're applying to public policy. I'm sorry if you're doing CALS. CALS is actually a really good strat if you can lean towards environmental science. But uh, well, they also even have an optional. Two hundred word. Oof, another optional. Remember, optional means mandatory. There you go, guys. There you go. There's my tryhards. Uh, College of Arts and Sciences. So this is kind of the the bread and butter. So I'm gonna focus on this one for this video. Uh, at the College of Arts and Sciences, curiosity will be your guide. Discuss how your passion for learning is shaping your academic journey, and what areas of study or majors excite you, and why. So it's basically a why major. Your response should convey how your interests align with the college and a why college and how you would take advantage of the opportunities in curriculum, arts and sciences. It's being very specific here. That's the first thing I'm noticing. How will you take advantage of the opportunities in curriculum? So a USC essay, right, would be uh, how will you study, pursue our major at our school at USC? So it's really just like give us an idea, give us a sense of how you plan on using our school resources, namely our school curriculum, courses that you take as well as research opportunities, pre-professional opportunities, et cetera, to realize your academic goals. This one is kind of a hybrid of not only that, but also on top of it, a why major essay. So if you're given, what is this, 650 words? Let me double check that. Yeah, it's 650 words. So in 650 words, uh, you need to write a Y major, Y college. I'd probably split the ratio up 300 words to 350. That, that would be fair. I can even go a little bit less on the Y college or Y major part. It would be maybe 200, 250 words of Y major. And then you leave the rest for Y college. Um, this is a great essay to start with. If you guys are just starting off with uh, working on your supplemental essays and you're applying to 12 to 15 schools or whatnot, um, Working on this first gives you the core that becomes very recyclable, the Y major and the Y college. The Y major being just the top half or top 250 words that you could then just chunk out. Um, and then the Y college part. So Y major, uh, here are a couple of things I'm not a fan of. I've always been interested in math. There's some generic things. I know this is not an engineering essay. There's a separate engineering prompt below. But like for engineers, the the Y major is like, I've always built Legos growing up. It, there's like very cliche kinds of things that I often stumble across. So uh, you got to talk with someone who has experience in reading all this to, to make sure that you're not coming across that way. But the Y major is really about finding an initial spark that then led to a high IQ. I think the biggest mistake students make is they have an initial spark, and then they maintain this like very shallow window shopping level of interest. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. And I could tell right away that it's something that your parents are suggesting to you rather than, than you like watching YouTube videos, you know, like going on Google and searching for yourself and going deep into. Uh, so be careful about showcasing a high genuine IQ signal for your Y major. Um, Specialize. If, uh, if I had to simplify it, show me the specialized areas of your major interest that, that intrigue you today uh, and do your research. And then the Y College. So for Y College, I actually have a quick little write-up. Uh, I'm going to read it to you. How to write a Y College. 
uh, research, research, research. Uh, before you even start writing a Y College draft, like if you are starting to just write, you're doing it wrong. The first thing you should be doing is opening up Cornell.edu, Cornell uh, um, uh, Arts and Sciences website, uh, Cornell's major specific website. Maybe suppose you're majoring in economics, so you do Cornell economics. They have their own major website. You should be opening those up and you should be looking through every nook and cranny of that. Ideally, there's actually two types of things you're looking for ingredient wise, if I had to categorize them. The first is the meta or the philosophy. And the second is going to be the, the name drops or the concretes, concrete details. So the meta and philosophies, uh, as I mentioned in, in a previous video for, for Yale, you're looking for kind of the overarching philosophies and values of how they're trying to teach what they're trying to teach. Maybe their focus is on innovation and equality. Maybe another focus is on creativity and global platforms. So a lot of schools are going to be very similar. I grant you that. But if you look hard enough, if you research hard enough, you're going to start finding little areas where you can particularly cling on to those and, 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 and lean on those to stand out. Um, if you're applying for USC, they focus on both classical and contemporary studies in economics with a focus on global interest and as well as creativity and innovation. So maybe you align yourself with those reasons. And from those reasons, you then can find specific little name drops that you can connect. Um, but research, research, research. Students must find compelling reasons to convince the readers that the college not only offers all the right tools to achieve the student's goals, but also offers all the right atmospheres and opportunities to grow into the individual the student wishes to become. There is a pre-professional emphasis and humanistic personal emphasis that must be proven through name dropping assets and aspects of the college. Correlating niche offerings to the student's desires and need is ideal. General categories to itemize college perks include. So when you're doing your research, Jay, what am I looking for? These are what you're looking for. Firstly, academic opportunities that could be particularly fitting or desired curriculum aspects. A lot of colleges will have like basic courses your freshman year and sophomore year. But then when you go to your third year and fourth year, they have electives or separated tracks that you could take that focus in certain concentrations. So if you look deep enough, you might be able to find that. If you are very kind of like, I guess, like very shallow with your research, then you might end up choosing something that's very basic. Choose something that's like a first year prerequisite that every college offers. Um, that's a really quick way to stand out in a bad way, right? Um, as opposed to students who went deep and like realized, hey, my second year to third year, I could start specializing in these regions and that's exactly what I want to do. Um, you're also looking for pre-professional opportunities, which kind of aligns with this social and pre-professional networks. This could be, for example, uh, if you go to NYU, uh, there's a lot of synergies with the finance industry. Uh, there's the United Nations office there. There's the arts districts there. So it's a matter of like geographical location advantage at some times too, when it comes to pre-professional opportunities. Uh, you're also looking for academic distinctions. Maybe they offer certain types of perks as a student there. Maybe they connect you to uh, first year um, uh, thesis research and they give you a, a mentor from the graduate department that can one-on-one -on -one assist you and guide you through your own research process. You got to be looking for these kinds of things, guys. Philosophical approach to education. I mentioned that earlier. You're looking for the about us mission statement. Um, geographical location doesn't necessarily have to just be pre-professional. It could also be uh, just the simple locational advantage. For example, maybe you're interested in going to LA because there's the Hollywood entertainment industry. And maybe that's not your major choice, but it's tangential to your side interest as someone who wants to continue with theater. Um, student activities and activeness. So this is like social clubs, in-school clubs. Uh, every college basically has a website, uh, a page where it lists out the, the different types of student activities. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of the campus lifestyle and the spirit. Being very active in, let's say, the uh the sports scene you know everyone supports their football team and and that's important to you you know the energy behind that the pride that you can have uh the the, the collective identity that you can share um, is important too and then there's unique academic or social programs perhaps they connect you to the downtown la foster care you know system where you can volunteer and you have a direct internship pipeline uh and then other particular student perks <laughs> what perks do i know of is it still the case, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at Yale, they used to have um, bulldog puppy days. So if they had, you know, because the bulldog is their mascot, so like they would have 
I remember maybe this was five, six, maybe even eight years ago. Uh, one of my students at Yale was super ecstatic and sent me a picture of her playing with like a bulldog puppies before finals as a way to de-stress. Another student perk that I can think of is like NYU or perhaps even Columbia, where your student ID gives you access to a lot of the, the museums around New York City, um, uh, art galleries in New York City. So there's things like that that you can find. Ultimately, you're trying to create a list of things you can mention. You're not going to mention everything on that list necessarily. But once you have a list of like 10 to 20 reasons, you can then start to organize your essay response as to the why major portion, the, the bottom half at the very least. You want to be prioritizing the academic reasons. I like to start very like, let's let's start with business first, guys. Let's start with like the academic, pre-professional, uh, the research opportunities. And then for the very end, as you're rounding out, I'd like to mention more of like the, the social reasons, the fun reasons, the student perk reasons. Yeah, let me scroll down real quick. I have a lot of students who are also doing engineering. And if you're applying as an engineer, <laughs> there's extra essays for you guys. So each, well, it's, each is 250. So this is why Cornell Engineering. So you got to be able to specifically point out, like, I want to go to engineering at Cornell because you guys are doing this level of specialization, this type of research, and these types of pipelines and opportunities. Um, then you have essay two, where you have to choose between A and B. Describe an engineering problem that impacts your local community. Ooh. This one, you're going to have to do some local research. You're going to have to look into, for example, in Southern California, it could be like wildfires. It could be traffic congestion. Um, it could be uh, towards civil engineering. It could be like a, um, the degradation of, of, of our civil, like our, our infrastructures, our freeways and our bridges. What else could that be? That's crazy. Um, flood management. Let's say like the, uh, the marshlands. Um, for the next big floods. Diversity in all forms is intrinsic to excellence in engineering. Engineering the best solutions to complex problems is often achieved by drawing from the diverse ingenuity of people from different backgrounds, lived experiences, and identities. This is almost like similar to the first 350 word essay, uh, any person, any study. So you want to be careful of that. But I can also see this working really well. My first thought to mind comes from, I remember reading like, if you, want an if you want to engineer a device or a product that reaches to a more range of people, then the, the simple answer is you need to look at your engineering team that's designing that product. If your engineering team is very monolithic or it's very homogenous, let's say it's like, you know, if it's like 100% uh, middle-aged uh, Caucasian males and you're then trying to sell a product to like, you know, Asian females, there's kind of a disconnect there in terms of like how a design process should be done. Um, what is the unique voice you would bring to the Cornell engineering community? Yeah, I, I think this also connects to uh, the uniqueness essay for, uh, what was it? I think this is a diversity essay for the most part, uh, the unique voice you would bring. So what's the, the element of diversity you bring? And I, I mentioned that in, in the Stanford essay about Maybe you grew up in, in Hawaii Bay and you have a, a deeper appreciation for, you know, like the ecological impacts or, or you're a farmer. And, and to that effect, your understanding of like uh, the, the old and the new and, and the vestigial sides and, and the feeling of meaninglessness and how we need to turn engineering products into being more kind of um, efficacious to, to, to resolving that for people. Maybe, maybe you have a drive because it's related to... Um, I was just thinking about the idea and just slipped my mind. Anyways, yeah, um, this is going to be really tough to do well, but has a really high ceiling to it. So if you want to dress to impress, uh, this would be a great choice. With that being said, I think a, a student who could show me a really sharp understanding is engaged in contemporary events in their local community and can write about A, I think that would be really cool too. My only suggestion is don't just point to the problem. Just like the Stanford um, Greatest Challenge, don't just go on a rant and say, these guys, these guys are cut. You know, you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to perhaps discuss possible starting points of solutions. Um, so that's emphasized right here. This, this becomes important to me. This, you have to make sure you answer this part of the prompt if you're going to question A. Okay, sorry if you have other, you know, I know that like labor relations, I know I have some students doing that, but I'm going to leave it simple for now. I hope that was helpful, guys. I'll see you guys around.